La Carnival is La Carna over. Well, everyone, thank you so much for being part of the committee and for helping out. We still have to calculate oh, all of the climbing. details, but it looks like we have a projected number for how much we've made so far. Mm, here's the secret envelope, Pastor. Thank you, Agnes. Now then, let's see how much we've made. We made $340. Are we missing a fourth digit and maybe a fifth digit too? Oh, good point. Nope. Uh, it's spelled out as $340. What the hell happened? Well, on our end, we bought a lot of wine. Too much wine. So that's a couple thousand. And whoever spilled that wine on the speaker system cost us $2,000. Oh, and don't forget we got ticketed by the official police for serving underage kids. So that's a few thousand dollars there, too. I had to pay the drag queen, so that's a few hundred. I had to buy some guns so I could protect you, horses. I bought those boards. I swear I didn't embezzle the money either. I just won a couple prizes. We raised a lot of money on our end. Yeah, like 200 bucks. So... So that's all the money we made? Wow. Guys, I, I don't know what to say. I know what I need to say. <gasps> Do you think she came from brunch? Oh, that can't it's be that time of day, guys. Pancakes? Do you think she bought a ticket from a carnival? Well, hopefully at least one or two. Oh my goodness gracious, where's that wine? Wow, wow. Holy, holy cow. cow. Jinx. Jinx, love you babe. Now this is one raffle I wouldn't have bet on. Seeing her face after all this time. That's right Gladys, the gun I bought was a raffle. Oh, wait till I tell my husband Patrick all about this. It reminds me of the time when I thought my sister was dead, but she came back with a, a shark bite and a couple of weird Ouija board pieces. Oh my gosh, this spicy bitch just shows up. The tea is about to get so good, girls. It's just lava tea over here. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Buddha, every spirit from yang and yang to alpha and omega. Have, have I been struck by the higher powers that be? Who the hell is that? Liv, this is the old receptionist we had before you. It's Sharon. <gasps> she stole over $50,000 from the church oh and God. all of the miscellaneous office supplies. And my great-grandmother's golden stapler. It wasn't 50000 It was 53 I see that in my time you guys haven't gotten around to getting sh done around here. Well, Sharon, getting sh done wrong is what we do best. Welcome back to Scone. Pastor Elijah made the church, non denominational and made of birch. They hired Liv, a new secretary, after the old one stole money unfairly. Carol Ann volunteers, my surrounds the choir. Jonathan doesn't work, yet he's still hired. There's no judgment at the non denominational. Some say things around here get inspirational. How dare you step foot in our holy church? Sweetie, this is just a parking lot. Well, the parking lot alone is too holy for your footsteps. Well, that's not true, considering the dirty secrets I know about this parking lot. Wait a minute. Everyone hear me out. Here. I can't hear anything. Oh, Sharon, honey. What's there to listen to? You stole all the money. Yeah, shouldn't you be, like, arrested, Sharon? Nah, babe. All of us are already in jail anyway. That's the human condition. Mm, ignore these hippies who are higher than a jet plane. Sharon, why are you here? What's going on? I came to apologize. I, I was in a bad place back then when I stole all the church's money and supplies. I've changed. I've gotten some help and atoned my wrong decisions. I am glad you got help, but Sharon, you're still not welcome. No judgment, but what you did, I, I don't think that I can forgive you. And I can't forgive you either. But I'm here with some of the money. Here's $10,000 on a cashier's check. Oh, wow, that's a lot of zeros. Well, if Sharon had never taken that 53000 we would have had that amount accruing interest in the church bank account at the modest guesstimate of 6.5 interest, which would have been accruing roughly $287 monthly. And that 
that's just principal interest. So adding up the interest lost over the 12 months that you've been gone, we've lost what could have been $3,444 respectively. Oh my gosh, oh, this kid ate paint. What the hell? What? Um, what the hell? Is Ricky math whiz? Is this new information? Peter's gay. We all thought Ricky was just a paint-eating dummy who worshipped Annabelle. Hashtag friend zone. Breaking news! Ricky knows math. Another reason that I'm proud of my son. <gasps> Peter, oh my gosh! We should help Ricky pursue his newly revealed math skills. Maybe he can go to a math camp. Ricky, where did you learn all of this? Gladys brings me to our special card games in the basement. The card games? Who said anything about card games? Last thing I heard was Sharon was giving us some of the money back that she stole. Which is just one fifth of the money that Sharon stole. And I'll pay the rest of the money back. I promise. Wait a minute. I I'm confused. Sharon, you come in out of nowhere with some of the money you stole and expect everyone to believe you have no ulterior motive? Like I've said, I've changed my wicked ways. I'm ready to redo all the wrongs by giving back all the money I stole and dedicating some time to Scone. You mean, you want to atone by volunteering around Scone? Exactly. What's the best way to work towards redemption? By putting in some hard work around this parish. Sharon, this is a lot to think about. Please think about forgiving me. I know that might be a lot to ask, but I think I deserve forgiveness. Well, like Jesus in the river or Abraham up the mountain, I will need some time to think about this. I still have the same number, so please call me so I can begin making up for all the things I did. Really, bitch? Because when you first left, we tried to call you on that number and that line was disconnected. That's because I dropped my phone in the toilet. Not because I was avoiding you or anything, but my phone number is working now. All right, I must be going. We will be in touch. Oh my god, she actually. Is that a cashier check? That's gonna clear. That's money. Old secretary Sharon is back. Was that one of them drag queens? Liv, I need you to call everyone that we owe money to. Tell them that at 3 p.m. today, we will have a press conference and pay everyone what they are owed. We're paying back everyone the church owes money to? Okay, let's see. We owe the bank, the electric company, the water company, Space Warner Cable, and the phone company, the gas company, the loan company for our shuttle, the organ. Oh, well, the AC is paid off for the next year. So in total, we owe payments to 16 companies. Well, call them all up, please. <sighs> Jonathan, can you call, like, half of these people? Liv, you want me to call eight different numbers all in one morning? I, I don't think I get paid enough for that kind of work. The last time I had to make more than four phone calls in the morning was the morning I found out I had strep. I needed to make, like, 17 phone calls then, and I just stopped calling after three and a half. I couldn't take that. Calling all sorts of numbers is not a road I can go down again. It's not healthy to call all your exes, and... I, <sighs> I guess I'll make all the phone calls. Thank you, Liv. We just really need all of those companies to know that their money is coming. I mean, we're lucky. If we hadn't gotten this money, then the church would be boarded up like a hurricane was coming. I mean, as much as I hate to say it, Sharon kind of came through. And, like, as much as I am upset with her, I'm, I'm glad that we got this money. Speaking of Sharon... Praise the Messiah. Liv, I do not have the energy to talk about Sharon. Well, are we going to let Sharon spend time volunteering here? Yeah, is Sharon going to volunteer to steal some more money from us? I need to listen to some harp and loot music before coming to my personal opinion. Alrighty then. So, press conference today at 3 p.m.? Can't wait. I can't wait either. It's kind of nice having money again. Well, now you know how we feel about payday around here. Well, this church is so broke. Yeah, I can't believe that they're actually paying I'm not even in the place where I have no idea what they're going to lie. Are they, they going to lie? Are they this lying to us? Really? Church, church, church is like the Dollar Tree of churches. Well, it was a bakery and it got shut down by the Better Business Bureau. I don't know what they're doing. I I heard their old secretary stole money and I heard their new one steal stuff. Thank you for all coming to this press conference. Well, we came because of the money. And you came because of the sound of an exciting press conference. Nope. We were just told that you had money for us. We had some more questions. 
but we were greeted by some sassy gay guy who said, what do I look like? Some business bitch? Excuse me. I said, what do I look like? Some kind of fashion bitch. Fake news over here. Hope I'm not late for the press conference. Well, what are you doing here, Marcy? I was told the church is having a press conference. That's why I wore my finest cocktail dress. The press conference is about the money we finally have. And if that's your finest cocktail dress, I would have stayed home. <laughs> oh, I thought this press conference was about the colorful celebrities of the church. <laughs> we have colorful celebrities at this church? Mm, yeah, in the color of slime green and urine. I'm sorry, there's just one colorful celebrity, and that's me. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, Marcy, but you're going to have to sit in the back. Oh, no worries, Elijah. I'll hang around towards the end and see if anyone has any questions for me. They won't. Thank you for coming, everyone. We invited you here so that we could give you all of the money that we owe you, and we just want to say thank you for being patient. We did repo your shuttle and organ, but we're ready to give it back, mainly because we realize that we can't make money on either a half-busted organ or a 1972 Volkswagen van. Really, though, a 1972 Volkswagen van? Is that even safe to drive? Well, the car is safe, but sometimes the person driving said car isn't safe. <clears throat> oh, I'm the only one who drives on that shuttle, Oh, so that's about me. <laughs> First up is the bank. Here's $2,007. Why are these checks so large? Are these fake checks? They're fake checks, but the money is real. I'm confused. Is the money real or is there no money? Maybe they called us here for this press conference to kill us or something. I told the pastor we shouldn't have printed the giant checks. Well, if the check isn't giant, I'm not going to cash it. Let me guess, if the check isn't big, you're not going to cash it with your ass? Oh my gosh, Liv, no! I meant cash it in the bank! Jesus! Caroline, can you start to pass out the giant checks, please? Oh, I'm afraid my arm length isn't long enough to hold these checks. You see, back in the day I played varsity basketball, but age takes a few things like arm and wing length and... Uh... Caroline, we are in the middle of hosting a press conference, not an anatomy class. Oh, my apologies. Here are some giant checks. You get a giant check for electricity, for water, for gas bills. Ow! Ow. Yikes, Ow. watch it with that check. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it was so heavy. Oh! Here's some money for the AC company. Oh, you guys paid up for the next year. Oh yeah, Gladys used some guy's, I mean, her husband's credit card. And if we don't owe you money, then why did you guys come? Well, someone who called me said there would be a free box of lunch. I didn't say a free box lunch. I said you could launch into my free box. Okay, so you don't you don't need this giant check. Well, I'll still take it. Why? Well, there's no money, right? These are fake checks. I can take it back and hang it in my office. No, this is real money. Sharon. Sharon, what? I'm sorry. You were saying? Uh, sorry, well... Our old secretary recently returned some of the money she plundered from us. And her name was Sharon? Sharon is a sore subject that we have to address. Well, if you're addressing this old secretary the way you address these old debts, then it'll take, what, six months to address this Sharon? Moving on. Here's some money for the fabrics, the smoke detectors, the smoke machine, the anti-smoking poster collection, the smoke and toke drug sweaters, the smoking rod electric scooter we had in the garage, oh, and a check for fresh foods who supply us with vegan protein bars, flash chips, and fair trade water. Oh, great. We'll get you your next shipment soon. Oh, well, I hate to say this. Uh, I hate telling people bad news. Business isn't personal, kid. Spit it out. When I, when I was younger, I was taught not to talk back to people. I thought this was a press conference, not a group therapy session. Fresh Foods, we have decided to forego buying your products because it's expensive and it's not in the budget. I thought they canceled Glee. Why is this guy singing every two minutes? Oh, we're not Glee. Nobody can dance around here. Excuse me? I understand that you're canceling. Fresh Foods is a high tier product that is not for lowbrow companies and organizations. Uh, low brow? Honey, these brows are high and arched. After all, the, the eyebrows, eyebrows are, are the, the window, window to, to the, the face. face. Now that we got the money, I'm going to go now. Ow! Watch out with that giant check. These giant 
checks are a pain in my giant ass. If this money isn't legit, I'm calling the mafia. Police, I'm a member of the mafia. You are? Well, the gay mafia. The gay mafia? Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm sorry, who are you? I'm Marcy of Marcy's Playground. You want a playground? Do you need any vendor services? Sir, I am a musician, not a typical plebeian. This press conference is about the release of my new album in six to eight months. Is it not? All right, guys, let's move on. This lady is just trying to waste our time. Does no one want to ask how hot it is being part of a band that produced one of the most iconic songs in the last century? Nobody wants to inquire about my upcoming EP. Moving on. Well, now that we've paid everyone off, how much money do we have left over? We have ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Not even enough to take everyone to Taco Bell. True, you know I like chalupas. So now can we focus on Sharon? Seriously, guys, we need to figure this out. What are we going to do with Sharon? Oh, well, I have a few ideas of what we could do with Sharon. You know what? I think I have left it like a ham in the oven. Well, time to go figure out if we can make more money. You know, I have to warm up my pipes for the uh, upcoming church service. I think I left a banana in the hammock. I, I, I gotta go. How does one forgive the unforgivable? How does one say it's okay when it's not? How does one accept an apology? How do I do that, oh Lord? Wow, I mean, Elijah, you outdo yourself every time. You're like a fine wine. <laughs> yes, Elijah, a fine wine. Specifically a true barefoot Pinot Guigio. That's been left open for a week. Forgiveness. What a word. It's a perfect word for what a lot of us are going through. In case you missed out, Sharon returned to us last weekend. Oh, wow. I didn't listen to the end of that last episode. I, I thought that we already talked about this. No. What do you, Is, okay, what do you we mean? Haven't covered it? You, Sharon. Brunch? Yes. I know. I know. But she gave us $10,000, and she wants to pay off her debts with both money and by volunteering with Scone. The question is, can we forgive Sharon? Should we forgive Sharon? Hmm, I don't know, Pastor. She stole so much money. Sharon reminds me of another one of our flock. <laughs> uh, why is everyone looking at me? Oh, Gladys, you steal money all the time. I have never stolen any money in my entire life. And even if I did, occasionally, I've never stolen 50 grand. I would only take a little off the top. Not enough for people to notice. Do I look like some rookie? Trust me, Barbara. I've had dreams about stealing that much money. But that's the thing about smart people. They realize dreams are for the suckers and... You know, people who don't have children. My office will be open for anyone who wants to talk about this trauma, you know, individually. I know Elijah has been doing some musical therapy. Yes, I have. I can also assist with the musical therapy department. No, Marcy, that would be musical trauma. Scone, this is Liv. No, we are not a bakery. No, I couldn't bake you a cake. Yes, seriously. You'll have to find someone else. I, I don't care what Google says. L Liv, are you busy? <sighs> I'm free now. What's up? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I forgot what I needed. Um, Elijah, are you okay? Well, well, I've been feeling... Ooh. Okay, Elijah, your response is too long for me to pay attention to. I, I just can't. Elijah, you can tell me what's going on. It's just this whole thing with Sharon. Oh, yeah, it, it's difficult. I remember that day, the last day, so well. It is this a flashback? It was six months ago, a beautiful day. The kind of day where you could just wear a t-shirt if you wanted to. Or maybe a light jacket, but definitely not sweatshirt weather. Hello, this is Scone. No. Not Cookies, the old cookie store. No, sir, we cannot make peanut butter, banana, chocolate, oatmeal cookies. No judgment, but good day. Sharon, do you need any help? After all, I'm still new to this job, and I want to know everything that I can do to help and work around here. 
No, sweetie. You just sit there and read that gay-ass magazine. Sharon, don't use the word gay as an insult. Boy, that magazine you have is called Gay-Ass Magazine Monthly. Oh, yeah, no wonder there's so many bare asses in this magazine. Sharon, have you... Uh, Sharon, Sharon, have you seen my great-grandmother's stapler? I haven't. Where did you last see it? It was on my desk. Maybe it's a sign you need a new stapler. I don't, I don't know. Well, it's a solid gold stapler. Solid gold? My great-grandmother smuggled it out of Russia. I thought you were Irish. She went to Russia for a vacation during the Soviet Revolution. Well, that's some bad timing. That's like when I took vacation to Seattle the day Amazon announced they were canceling human rights. The traffic was terrible. Good morning, children and adults of God or a generic higher power or someone or something more specialized. Pastor, have you seen my great-grandmother's stapler? No, I haven't seen it. Pastor, I'll be taking an early lunch today. But Jonathan should be good to cover the front desk, even though he's a bit new. I'll be able to answer any questions that people have about us being a bakery. What's for lunch, Sharon? I'm in the mood to spend some money. So I'm thinking I'll go get me a steak and maybe a glass of champagne with caviar. Oh, that sounds lovely. Oh, I gotta go. Our child violin prodigy Stacy is off key again. Stacy, you gotta play the violin with more grace. Okay, Mr. Groot again. I'm heading out. I'll be back later. Oh no! The pastor's office door is wide open. Better close that for her. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at these bare asses. I love it. Now where's the safe? I have the combination ready. I just gotta find the safe. Oh, there's that puppy. Stacy, less vibrato, more sonato on that violino. Yes. Look at all that hard cash. I'm off to lunch, everyone. Oh, wow. That flashback was as underwhelming as a Marcy story. You just summarized what we knew, that Sharon stole that money and your stapler. Also, Elijah, like, how did you know those details of when Sharon entered the pastor's office and stole the money from the safe? Jonathan, you were the one who witnessed that part. Well, I thought Sharon was saying make sure to play safe as an encouraging safe sex. I didn't think Sharon meant where is the safe? Like the money? And I, I, I can't do all this work. Okay, whatever. Liv, don't you see? Sharon conned us so hardcore. She just took us, slammed us down, pressed us up against us, and did us dirty and raw. I was definitely in those shoes last Friday night. <laughs> well, Sharon is asking for forgiveness. And think about all the times you had to ask for forgiveness, Elijah. But I never did anything as bad as Sharon. Elijah, Liv, Jonathan, I've come up with a solution. A solution to fixing the coffee maker so that we can both have cold brew and iced coffee in the workplace? Since when has that been a problem? I don't do hot coffee, Liv. I mean, the lack of iced coffee here is a problem. What have you devised, Pastor? We should have a circle. Oh my gosh, a circle. A circle jerk? Clearly not that kind of circle. Pastor, what do you mean by a circle? It'll be like a giant intervention forgiveness rant circle about Sharon, and it'll be open to the public. The public? Do you just mean the parish? The same difference. Well... Carolyn, I need your help now, please. That also happened last Friday. Jesus, you're lucky we don't have an HR department. I am the only resource for humans this church needs. Also, we had an HR guy for like three hours before he quit, and we've been fine without him. Yes, of course. Never mind our several pending lawsuits. Oh, I came as... Oh, quick as oh I could. Oh, oh, oh. Carolyn, that took you <clears throat> nearly 20 <clears throat> seconds. Yeah, oh, yeah. That is four more seconds than usual. Oh. We don't have time for your daily dilly dallying. Uh. I need you to go buy a hundred candles from Mystic Mama. But uh, the uh, the bus doesn't go that far. Ooh. Maybe Mystic Mama will do a drop off. After all, a hundred candles is a huge order. Do you guys maybe want to use, like, generic candles instead? Because Mystic Mama charges $10 a candle. Well, since Sharon returned with some money, we have some money to burn. We're still in debt, right? And didn't we already spend all that money except for, like, $10? We set aside a lot of money for wine and candles. Every religion has wine and candles after all. That feels like a stretch. Well, what do you think? Maybe if we have a circle, we will find the ability to forgive Sharon. 
I agree. I want to forgive Sharon, but I don't know if I'm ready yet. Maybe the circle will make me explode with love. That actually wasn't part of last Friday. I shuffled all the way over here for this bullshit. Non-Denominational Season 2 was executively written and produced by Matt Rebar and Blaze Pratt. Leave a five-star rating and a comment rating if possible. Non-Denominational Sitcom Podcast was co-created by Matthew Rebar, Blaze Pratt, Karen Adams, and Kelsey Shago. Music and sound effects collected from freesound.org, audionautics.com, and some originals by Matthew Rebar. Thank you to our regular cast of voices this season, which included Karen Jones, Annalise Rebar, Paul Lox, Jessica Lockhart, Emily Terry, Reggie Pratt, Joanna Molson, Julia Adams, Amy Adams, Kyle Pratt, Andy McGee, Jordan Yule, Michelle Morgan, Maria Cross, Dennis Baker, River Anwundinjo, John Toth, Scott Terranova, and others who contributed. Check out the website for more information at www.nondenominationalpodcasts.weebly.com or check us out on Instagram at nondenominationalscone. Until next time.